Hello guys and welcome back and in this video we are going to discuss what are containers actually. Now I have obviously written what is a container so in this video we are going to discuss in detail what is a container how that works and how that is different. Just to be sure it is not a physical container I'm talking about this is something which is virtual which is available for the computer science students or the people who are in the IT field. Okay, before we start our journey learning about the containers, we have to understand why we need a container. Okay, so let's try to understand what was the previous approach or I should say what was the traditional approach. So let's say you want to start a company like Instagram, an example. So what you would do, you will spin up a server, you will install the operating system, you will install the software, you will install the patches if I may, you will host your database, you will host your application. And then you will put this in, uh, specific server to the internet if I may. Now, I don't know how that is internet, but yes, this is the internet. Now, the question is, what is the problem with this? This is something which we do every single time. The problem is, first of all, let's say if your application starts to scale. So obviously now Instagram has a billion users. So you have to do this for, let's say, into 100 different individual machines. Now the problem is obviously you can understand the complexity which is it is going to actually they be there and obviously you have to make sure that all the applications are available on the internet so now you get the idea if i talk about a single machine it is quite easy for me to manage because i don't have to do anything complex in that but once my application or i should say my infrastructure starts to scale in that scenario, it actually becomes difficult for me or almost impossible for me to manage anything which is happening in these servers. Okay, now the next thing which is quite amazing, like I would not say it's amazing, but it's difficult. Let's say a machine has a different configuration. Some, mach you know, some machine have operating system of Windows 11, some have Windows 10, some have Windows 7, some has Ubuntu and some has Mac, just an example. So you can imagine if there are so many versions of just operating system because obviously from day one you're not sure what kind of an operating system you would be using. So you can understand that this is now further creating more issues for me because it will be a bit difficult for me to manage these complexity and manage these complexity because it is not just one click update you have to do for your operating system because your whole application depends on individual servers if I may. Now you can say that Avinash, fine, I'll do one thing, instead of creating 100 different virtual servers or the different things, what I'll do, I'll create a simple virtual machine. Now what is a virtual machine here? A virtual machine is a combination of hardware and some magical software which makes one machine into multiple machines. So a simple example here you can see, our infrastructure, I would say this is the hardware part of it. Then we have hypervisor which is a special magical software if I may, which is going to break this individual infrastructure into three equal virtual machines. So you can see they have a guest operating system individually attached. They are all isolated from each other. So this person, oh sorry, this virtual machine does not know that this virtual machine exists. And this virtual machine does not know that this virtual machine exists. If I talk about in terms of data, the data is sitting in the individual virtual machines. They cannot, it cannot be shared with anyone. Now, the question is, if this is something which is already available, why should I be learning containers? To answer this scenario, we have taken a step forward. What is the step forward? Instead of having multiple hardwares, we are having multiple virtual machines, so at least it is manageable. But the problem again arises in terms of configuration. The operating system here, it can be X, op X version, this could be Y version, this could be Z, Z version. Now the problem is the platform which it depends on, the platform which is going to be uh, installed on this particular piece of operating system, it can be supported in this version, it can be supported in this version, but it is not supported in this particular version. Secondly, my company has a virtual machine which has an example, 32 gigs of RAM, 160 gigs of hard drive, let's say i11 processor, uh, just an example I'm taking. Obviously, not every single individual can match this kind of a power. A person can have at max, let's say, 16 gigs of RAM. They can have i7 and they can have like 
again yeah they can have around 160 gigs of storage so the problem is the problem is related to configuration in my local machine if i may i i have windows 11 i'll take windows 10 as an example and in the server we have windows 11 now the problem is i am developing a software which has a different configuration which is running on my machine the main server the production server has a different configuration so the problem is it actually arises and it is known as something which we call it it works on my machine i don't know why it is not working in your machine this is a very popular joke so this is the reason behind that particular joke because your configuration is different the production machine's uh, configuration is different and that arises to the conclusion that if the configuration of the software is different the building of the pro uh, software if i may and the management part of that software is going to get difficult or almost impossible to manage okay now i was discussing the sort of disadvantages and how virtual machine works but let's talk about the actual pain points in the virtual machine environment if i may so the first pain point if i may is related to maintenance you have to maintain a lot of virtual machines obviously now this is something you can say that avinash it does not affect me because i have some automation software or something like that i'm not talking about that i'm talking about individual businesses small businesses startups where they don't have the capacity of buying those kind of softwares or the resources secondly if i talk about it actually messes up our cost and it actually costs us more to manage those kind of infrastructure. Then the performance after the certain time. So basically what happens, your hardware is ultimately something which is going to get degraded. It is going to have a wear, wear and tear. If I talk about your application, let's say you start your application building on Windows 7 and now the Windows 11 era is there. So you can understand the advancements of technology which is happening now if you're not able to upgrade your infrastructure in that case obviously performance will be degraded after a certain time and finally the complexity part now this can be debatable why i'm saying this complexity can be debatable because a lot of people can say hey i have a good infrastructure i have the understanding i've made so many mistakes i've worked with so many big companies so i understand how to manage that well that is for you Again, I will say this is what we are talking about the Gen Z generation which do not know how to manage this kind of complexity or who do not have the, uh, I, I would say sort of an understanding how this kind of a big infrastructure should be managed or can be managed. Okay, so we have discussed everything which is wrong with virtual machine. Again, I just want to be upfront with you guys. I'm not against virtual machine, I'm against the concept or the way with which that infrastructure was designed. Now let's try to understand what is a container and how that works. Traditional approach, building every single software or hardware from my side. Virtual machine is basically what I'm trying to do is I'm having a hardware and I'm installing various different operating systems and someone has a different operating system in their own development machine. Now comes the container. What is a container? First of all, let's look into this diagram. We have taken this diagram from the official Docker website. We have the infrastructure. Again, I'll call it, it is a hardware. We have a host operating system. Now, this is something now just irrelevant. It can be Ubuntu, it can be Windows, it can be Mac. It does not matter now. The operating system on which your platform is supposed to run is not going to matter anymore because the Docker or I should say the container software is going to take care of everything. Let's say your application A runs on .NET version 4. It does not matter what kind of an operating system I'm using. This particular Docker of, uh, uh, I should say, infrastructure or I should say software is going to install all the required libraries to run this .NET version 4. Let's say application B runs on PHP version 4. Again, I don't have to install any special files. I just install the required files to run that particular platform. This version wants to run Node.js version 10. Again, I'll repeat, I don't have to install any specific thing. I just install the required libraries to run the version Node.js 10. That is it. Sometimes we call these things as images in the Docker ecosystem. What is an image? Image is sort of a blueprint of the ideal infrastructure or I should say ideal environment on which your individual application is going to run now here is an advantage let's say you are working on an application which runs on version python 4 an example 
now this infrastructure has a very big i should say resource let's say let's let's come back to your home you have i5 8 gb of ram and let's say 512 gb of hdd and you have ubuntu ubuntu as an operating system your company is using windows now you decide for some reason you don't want to use windows so what you will do you will not go to the market and purchase a windows operating system you will come back and you will simply install this docker software and your company is going to provide you an image which you are going to download and when you are going to install you can run this whole python 4 application for some reason this was also moving you can run this whole python version 4 application in your local machine with this configuration especially the operating system so this is how containers are useful they actually give you an infrastructure i should say the environment required to run different things a simple example i would give if i am not able to explain myself let's say if i want to speak tamil now i cannot learn everything in tamil it will take me at least 3 months but let's say if i want to say hi how are you in tamil i'll just learn that particular phrase and i'll start using it it will hardly take me 5 minutes so this is how containers have made our infrastructure if i may or i should say the way or i should say the way of building application lot easier now what are the advantages we get with the containers so first of all they are the standards so they follow a certain set of standards so like let's say if you want to build a, a lamp stack application you don't have to install different hardware and sorry different software if i may they are lightweight so obviously you don't have to install huge 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 uh, things if i may finally they are also secure and security is something which is quite important because this gives you a security so that you have the trust factor building the applications